All right, hello. What's up, everybody? My name is Sen. Welcome back to the channel. And for those of you that didn't know, I recently did a video talking about modern controls. That video did pretty well. And yeah, you guys got to hear my take. All in all, I'm fine with modern controls. I just prefer not to have them, but it's fine that they're there. But what I wanted to do for today's video is take a look at some of your guys' takes. Even though I've probably responded to a lot of these already, I wanted to share them here and maybe we could talk about them a little bit. I don't, I won't lie. Some of you guys wrote me like a novel back, like a sh fucking short story. And we might review like one or two of those. I don't really know, but yeah, kudos to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> all right let's start with this one uh to me i don't mind either as long as both players have access to the same inputs in the game by that i mean the both players have to access the same input option at the same time so this is kind of like my take where i don't like street fighter 6 because it's either one or the other more specifically i like grand blue because both players have access to both things at the same time you could do the the classic inputs you can do the modern input at any and all times. I don't like modern as much in Street Fighter because it's one or the other. All right, let's take a look at this one. Uh, all right, summarization of this one is that, uh, you know, top players or professional players talking about that they're losing too much playing on modern uh, versus like, you know, just having full range of control on classic. Um, that's fine, I, I guess. This idea that everyone will play the fighting game that they're interested in regardless of whether it has motion inputs or not is wrong, at least in my experience. I've tried numerous times to get into Street Fighter 4 and 5 because I think Chun-Li, Bison, and Zangief look cool. Nice. Uh, I've quit those games every time because of all the double quarter circle forward inputs and 360 inputs. I don't play Street Fighter 6 either because every time I lose with modern controls, I feel like I lost only due to my not spending months slash years of my life to practice combos or classic or on classic controls. Uh, I can do quarter circle forwards, but I'm not comfortable doing a Z input, aka DP motion, and I don't want to spend my time practicing consistent DP inputs. Uh, I'd rather just play other fighting games like Grand Blue Fantasy Versus or Tekken or games in other genres entirely like Baldur's Gate 3. I also know two people in my life that love Dragon Ball, or like Dragon Ball Z, and they love it so much that's basically part of their identity. They used to play Budokai Tenkaichi 3 from sunrise to midday, but they absolutely despise Dragon Ball Fighters because of all the quarter circle forward motions you have to do quickly within combos. This one's a, a weird take, um, because the first statement alone, and they're just saying in their experience and like they're related to their friends, but often cases, if you're really into the idea of getting into a fighting game, you will... Uh, get into it in spite of it having modern controls or not. There's plenty of players that go back and play Third Strike. There's plenty of players that go back and play Marvel 2, Street Fighter 2. They go back and play these classic games because they either enjoy the time that they're from, the nostalgia that makes them feel, or like cool things that they see that they can do potentially once they kind of raise their level. Um, if nobody got into the game, I mean, oh, look at, uh, no, look no further than Guilty Gear. Plus R. I mean, there was plenty of people that went back to play that game because they were patiently waiting for Strive to come out. There was like this weird, great time, and then Plus R got rollback, and everyone was super into it. This, they're like, this game is sick. And no one would have found out about it if it didn't get rollback. Probably, no one would have probably joined the scene. And there's plenty of people after Dragon Ball Fighters that got into Guilty Gear because they're like, oh, Arc System Works makes Dragon Ball Fighters. They make this game too, and then people went to go check it out. Um, so yeah, if you are interested in the game enough, you will kind of put in the work to get past like the initial barrier, even if it's an older game, it's, it's just how it goes. Like, essentially, you're not invested enough in something like Street Fighter 4 or 5 to get past your own, like, barrier, which is fine. Like, you said you found Solace in Grand Blue Fantasy Versus and Tekken, and that's great. Like, those are great games. I'm glad you're enjoying those. I don't know, there's not much of a take to like talk about here. I, I think I've said everything I really can. Um, yeah, like Dragon Punch inputs are a little weird. I remember when I was a kid, I struggled with them for a while. Uh, I f eventually found a trick because I was trying to do forward into down, into down forward, but you can just hold forward and then roll the input. It makes it substantially easier. Hopefully that helps. Uh, three, 360 inputs are much harder for me. Uh, I never spent time to get good at them, especially on Hitbox. It's like even weirder. Um, but people disguise their 360 inputs with like a jump or like an attack or something like that. So that's a little bit of uh, help there. 
Uh, Chun Li has no DP or uh, 360 inputs that I know of, so she's a charge character. So uh, you could keep playing Chun Li, I guess. And I, uh, Bison is also a charge character. So uh, the boy Olaf the Bard. Uh, I have some thoughts on this. Let's chat sometime. Absolutely, let's make that happen. That definitely needs to happen. If Street Fighter 6 didn't have modern, I would not play the game. I like easy things. I don't deny the fact that modern controls has opened the gate for a lot of new people to get into. With that said, modern controls does not make the game easy. It might make it easier because you're not worried about, oh my god, my phone. Because you're not worried about something like execution as far as special moves are concerned. But everything else around fighting games is just as hard, if not even harder than the motion inputs themselves. I believe in the fact that you guys can get past the motion inputs if you want to. You don't have to. I don't care if you do or don't. Um, <laughs> I was going to poke fun <laughs> at you guys a little bit. Is like this video <laughs> that if a dog can do a fireball, I think you can too. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I'm, I'm just poking a little fun. Like I said, I don't really care if you guys play on modern or classic. Personally, I prefer classic. I like, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, I like easy things. That's fine. Um, there are like with some of the people, like there are plenty of players that are playing on modern that do make it to master or diamond or whatever rank. Like you can get pretty well as long as the strategy that you're employing is solid. Uh, if you're going to play like a scrub and not really be willing to learn the game, you're still going to get bodied in spite of modern controls or not. Simple inputs, rollback, crossplay are going to be the new standard. Devs aren't dumb. They know a hardcore FGC audience is mostly getting old. Only way to grow is to make these games less daunting to get into, but hard to master. Look at Project L. Street Fighter 6, hell, even Tekken has half-assed simple input control schemes. Uh, one, I didn't know about the Tekken. Uh, I haven't really followed the Tekken 8 scene or anything like that. I do agree that this is the direction that fighting games are going. My only worry is that I don't want things to get too much simpler than they are now. Like, I like kind of things where they are at. If games want to get easier and more inclusive like if something like street fighter got even easier i don't know if street fighter would be the type of game i'd want to play anymore i'd probably migrate on over to a different game um and when games get easier like it makes like i, I like when games are difficult for the simple fact that when someone does something really fucking hard you know it's difficult and it's fucking badass and it creates great moments if games get easier it kind of takes away some of those moments so i don't want to stray too far away from that that's why i kind of defend classic controls that's why i defend like very difficult games or like executionally tough games like street fighter 4 there's a bunch of amazing moments in street fighter 4 even though i wasn't playing fighting games that seriously at that era i have a great appreciation for that era or like marvel versus capcom 3 cloud doing the infinite uh that was fucking sick like a bunch of like high execution things like even older games uh, have their really cool bits of execution or really cool things you can do within them. Uh, and I, I don't want to get too far away from that because I feel like you lose something special. This is probably the most level-headed take I've seen on modern controls. Personally, I don't like them as the one-size-fits-all solution. Uh, as much as I do agree that it can help people with disabilities, it bogs down the game for everyone else. And to have people say that modern controls needs to be just as good as classic, either unintentionally or intentionally just want the game to shift directions away from its past in a bad way. What did I even say? Hard agree on this, fam. This one's tough to dissect. Uh, even though I said hard agree, I don't necessarily entirely agree. You gotta, like, you guys have to understand that I was responding to some of these, like, super late at night. I was, like, super tired and getting them. Like, these responses at all times of the day. Um... So for some comments, I would not have given as much of an in-depth like response as I would like would have edgewise. I don't see modern controls as a one-size-fits-all because it's very divisive on who does or doesn't use them. Uh, there's a reason it's controversial. Like, there's a reason why not every pro, uh, pro player is switching to modern or not every player is switching to modern. It's because there's drawbacks. It bogs down the game for everyone else. Um. 
once again, like, I, I want to fall into the statement where it's just like, you know, just because you're playing modern controls doesn't mean you're going to be Daigo or anything like that. I definitely don't want modern controls to be as good as classic. I think there's a reason they need to be worse um, or just like at least have a drawback because you're gaining a big benefit for having something like reaction. Uh, being able to reaction super or reaction DP is way stronger than people think it is. Like, I know I understand there's a nerf. I understand that you have less control of your character, but in the clutch, being able to reaction super to something like a bad fireball being dramatically easier once it used to be very, very hard. Seeing someone react to a bad fireball with super or DP was like incredible. It's like, he's Daigo, he's Daigo, but it's so much easier. And in a clutch situation, like it weighs on the things and your ability to do things in neutral. Um, because you're thinking about moments where it's just like, no, he's going to react to fireball if I do a bad fireball. Like, I need to play cleaner. Um, thinking on the fact that your opponent is playing modern changes the way that you approach playing them. And it makes it dramatically harder to think about what you can or can't do. And then that in turn weighs on your mental stack and changes how you play. And you might play worse because of it. Ooh, this is this is a video in itself by the way i'm gonna literally make a video on this comment right here but i'll read it for you guys just gonna throw it out there no one wins an award at evo for player expression the only thing that matters is the w and the viable options in depth need to get it what did i just have a stroke reading that just gonna throw it out there no one wins an award at evo for player expression the only thing that matters is the w so the win and the viable options and needed to get it. Okay. Um, so yeah, that is between the control scheme, the viable options. Um, yeah, this is just wrong. <laughs> Actually, uh, you do win at EVO because of player expression. Uh, short take, player, and player expression encompasses everything that you do as a player that differentiates you. So that's actually just wrong. Uh, as someone just getting into traditional fighting games this year, Modern Controls has been such a help. That's awesome. I'm fucking, I'm stoked that it's helping you get into the genre. I love this genre. Uh, I can actually play with my friends and have a good time. I think Street Fighter 6 has done it well where there's a damage nerf to modern inputs and shorter combat. Oh my God, I can't read. I think Street Fighter 6 has done it well where there's a damage nerf to modern inputs and shorter combat potential overall. That's true. Uh, I do think Street Fighter 6 has done it well um, it's just very divisive, like, it, it's a slippery slope with how much you nerf or buff something to actually be good, because, like, if you buff modern controls too much, it's gonna, there's, it's gonna be a case of there's no reason not to use them, where if you make them too shitty, no one's going to use them, right? Uh, there's, it's gonna be like, why are you using modern controls at all? Uh, classic players have enough moves to blast a third of your health in one combo with string extending buttons. So I'm always more worried about a classic opponent than a modern one. Oh, so with that, if you really want to extend your combos in Street Fighter 6, you're going to be spending resources. And in the case of modern controls, you can kind of do that anyways. I would say it's more focused about what you do and don't do with drive gauge. With that said, you are going to get more combo potential on classic because you have all of your moves. Uh, my friends are Diamond and Master Rank. I'm Plat 4. Nice. I'm uh, also in the Plat ranks somewhere. I still need to grind Street Fighter a lot. So I always lose 20 to 3 against them in long sets. I decay, but to me, that says something about skill and how much modern actually bridges the gap. So in a way, they're kind of... Um, yeah, no, I mean, that's true. Uh, like, if you're just better... Um, you're going to outperform someone on modern or not like it doesn't matter like at the end of the day It still comes down to skill and just like how well you actually play the game Um, but he says like oh, you know modern actually bridges the gap between me and them quite a bit and I mean Yeah, I agree. It gets you playing the game immediately In a way you edgewise might not have like who's to say that Without modern controls, like, would you be playing worse? I don't know. Uh, I think eventually you would get to your skill level on classic controls. Uh, eventually, it would just maybe take a little bit more time. You'd have to, like, refigure things out again. But, you know, I believe in the fact that if you got to plat 4, you could do it again on classic. 
But yeah, it is a nice introductory way to get you playing with some of your more experienced friends, so that's awesome. That's badass. Let me find, like, a more negative comment. <laughs> okay, this is a little bit too much. I'm just gonna close that. That that was truly a novel. Holy cow. People are acting like you can't have a game with execution pretty much all over the place. Stripe is a great example of this, because Zato might be dummy hard execution to be really good with, where Pot doesn't but takes arguably more game sense to achieve the same results. Games like Dive Kick, which has two buttons and yet still rich strategy, execution barriers don't make gameplay any better or moments more hype. If a fighting game is just designed well alongside lowered execution barriers, then the emerging gameplay will allow competitors to make moments like Evo 37 happen. Um, the first part of your take is fine i'm actually like what you're saying makes a lot of sense here uh yeah there's there's definitely games in this era with differences in the execution spectrum like you're right strive actually is a great example of this like if you're really really good executionally with zato you can rock people's world uh not only in the knowledge tech spectrum but you're just going to be able to do really amazing things with that character and you're correct that if you have good game sense with a character like Potemkin, you're going to be able to do well. Uh, the things that Zato and Potemkin desire are very different uh, on top of like where each character sits on the tier list. Zato is a really, really good character, but he's just demanding. Like He demands the execution, he demands the game sense, he demands the knowledge to be played at a top level. That's why people pick uh, simpler characters that they can manage a bit easier, but there are definitely really good Zato players out there that are just committed to the character because of they like him or they like his execution or they like the things that he enables you to do. Uh, out of my understanding, Potemkin's just a bad character. <laughs> like, he's not strong. He's Zangief, right? You know, you can still play Zangief well, but he's going to have to work to get some of the good things going. Uh, with that said, this is my take before Wild Assault. I don't know how good Wild Assault makes a character like Potemkin. I actually don't know. Games like Dive Kick exi exist, which have two buttons and yet are still rich in strategy. Execution barriers don't make gameplay or any better or moments more hype. If a fighting game is just designed well alongside lower execution barriers, then the emerging gameplay will allow competitors to make moments like EVO 37 happen. This is just not true. The reason EVO Moment 37 happened is because it was fucking difficult. It was do or die. Um, Alright, here's the thing. It's more surprising if you're in the fighting game scene and you don't know about this moment. This is Daigo Omohara versus Justin Wong in Street Fighter Third Strike. Chun Li, aka Justin, has a very commanding lead. Like this game is all in wraps. I don't know why the face cam is in the way right now. Um, Chun Li has a commanding lead, uh, one of the best characters in the game, and a rare footage of Daigo actually angry. So what Justin Wong is doing is he's buffering super here because this game is uh, you can chip out. This is for the winning round, and he does super. And what Daigo does here is executionally difficult. He parries every hit of Chun-Li's super, which for most people in this situation, that was all but curtains. Uh, this moment is super hype. This moment is super amazing. And it's made even more amazing because it's executionally difficult. If you want to parry a strike in third strike, you have to be within a 10 frame window of that strike actually happening. If you're going out of your way to make games easier you're going to lose moments like this this is a terrible comparison uh if the game is just designed well alongside lower execution barriers then the emerging gameplay will allow oh, okay with that said there's never going to be a moment like ebo moment 37 again the only way i could see this happening is i mean technically it could happen in street fighter 6 because how how big of a window is perfect parry in Street Fighter 6? Two frames? It's really hard to get something like Evo Moment 37 to happen in Street Fighter 6 because um I don't actually don't even know if you can. To be honest, um there might be a situation, but 
you would have to perfect parry every one of chun li's supers or you'd have to perfect parry every hit in chun li's super but you can't parry unless you have drive meter and you wouldn't take chip damage if you have meter so it's li is it impossible for evo moment 37 to happen in street fighter 6 because of the drive meter system i think so because if you're in chip range uh that means you have no drive meter that means you can't parry uh, which means you definitely can't perfect parry like perfect parrying chun li's super in street fighter 6 is literally just a flex edge wise you would just regular parry it or even just block it uh, but I think regular parry would be better because you wouldn't take it as much damage to your drive meter. I think the real take to look at here is execution barriers don't make gameplay any better or moments more hype. That's just wrong. Uh, literally, I showed a clip within this video of Daigo's combo. Um, Daigo Street Fighter 4 combo, one of his most iconic combos. I think he's fighting Punko. I, I, who did he fight? He was fighting Momochi, excuse me. Uh, and the reason this moment was as crazy as it was was because daigo did something executionally difficult it was very hype uh it would have been less hype dramatically if daigo didn't go for the big combo if he just dropped it off early went for a reset or you know chose a different knockdown or something but instead he went for that combo because he potentially thought he could kill maybe i don't know maybe he thought he could seal the game up with that one combo with that said though it leaves Momochi in a spot where he has a pixel. What is Momochi going to do in this situation? Super? Super doesn't kill. Uh, and oh my god, what is his meter again? I forget what this meter is kill. Uh, his ultra doesn't kill either. Uh, so Daigo just does meaty DP because, uh, you know, I don't know if meaty DP goes through any of the supers if it does momochi was just in a losing situation that was curtains anyways because chip damage exists in this game and if uh the super if the dp is invincible to the super and just goes through anyways it's essentially checkmate but daigo is willing to risk that situation happening getting woke up super or woke up ultrad um because he has still essentially a full health bar uh he's confident that he can find a situation after this fact that gets him the victory anyways. So, uh, it does make moments like this more hype. The reason it's hype is because of the execution, much like EVO moment 37. That moment is executionally difficult, which makes it crazy. The fact that that game was all, like, all as well as guaranteed is what makes it so crazy. Do you understand the logic here? Yeah, if you guys want me to do a part two of this, let me know in the comments down below. This was actually a lot of fun, um, and it was good to hear from you guys and, like, cool to share it with some of you other guys that might have either agree with me or agree with the commenter at hand. I wasn't picking these comments out of bias or anything. I was truly just picking them randomly, whatever I was stumbling across. Uh, I can get to more negative comments that are against me in another part or something like that, but if you guys enjoyed, let me know in the comments down below, and, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys later. Peace.